Hello everyone, here I am with the Cosmic Climate for the week of June 6th through the 12th and I'm a little bit delayed with this Cosmic Climate. As I'm recording this on June 7th, I just got back from vacation. I was visiting family. It was really good, but it was definitely really challenging, which I feel is like natural to going on vacation, especially visiting relatives because you tend to break your routine and um, which can feel like discomfort. And for me personally, you know, my daily routine is very spiritual, very connected, um, a daily devotion to the goddess and just like my goddess self and just taking time to really get clear for the day. And so not having that space for like a week was really, really challenging. And I actually, you know, um, really got a different perspective. And what really came through for me um, because going back home, you know, I had to revisit a lot of my um, wounds that are still open, a lot of just, you know, things I maybe not, maybe didn't want to accept or face um, about maybe my childhood or just who I am and, and just, you know, just certain unfinished business, I would say. And while in that space, you know, that naturally brought me some anxiety and also it brought in some realization of like, is this essentially what the collective is feeling or what individuals are feeling when they don't have that daily practice of connecting with the divine and centering and grounding oneself while they're in this, this world of chaos? And it wasn't chaotic by any means, but just while certain things are coming up, um, and you're having to, you, you feel almost forced to address these particular um, shadow aspects of yourself and, you know, your environment and your family and things of that nature. Not having that ability to connect with the divine, to center yourself, to be in a space where you feel safe, even if it's for just one part of the day out of your entire day, not having that seems very um, vulnerable, very um, scary, and just it made me feel really insecure. That was, you know, a bit of my experience. And it wasn't like that bad, but I realized, you know, coming home, when I got home last night and finally had a moment to like rest or to sit, you know, once I got my little one to sleep, my whole entire body was like, I feel like vibrating. Like I could feel the blood flowing through my body and it was really uncomfortable. It was like, my body was just so activated, so even tense um, that I had to lay on the floor of my office, which is also my sacred space, my meditation space. I laid down, put some earbuds in and like listened to some some source music or some sound healing music and just really centered myself and began to ground myself and it didn't really work <laughs> like that well like it like because I was really you know um and I felt honestly like it was kind of that transition of you know if you're at a low vibration and all of a sudden like you step into this really like like I felt like I was like coming in you know not in that vibration that I usually exist within and I step into my space and I'm just like hit with all of this like high vibrational energy and it was like really hard to calibrate with it and it really kind of just dialed everything up and it wasn't until like I actually you know went to sleep and woke up this morning and I was feeling like a little bit more at relaxed and once I like did my morning uh, devotion I was able to really like feel more centered grounded and aligned and so I was just really sitting with that and I was like is this how it feels when you're in the 3d and you don't have that safe space you don't have that point of security you don't have that daily devotion and trust and faith and connection to spirit whether whether it's your ancestors you know the universe your angels whatever it is like if you don't have that like is this how it feels in this world right now and so with that coming through, um, you know, I was sitting with that last night and it kind of, you know, it just dawned on me. And then this morning I had a really, really intense dream. And I share my dreams here before when it's, you know, rel relative to the collective and what's going on. And in this dream, it was myself and a group of people 
we were sitting like i don't even know where we were but we were expecting a storm like we knew the storms were coming and in this particular case it was tornadoes and so instead of running for cover we were outside and we were sitting together at times we were holding hands or like locking arms and just breathing as the tornado came through and it's like can it lift us up right like is it going to lift us up and like send us to our doom right like kill us essentially or you know or are we going to hold our ground right and i remember this was ongoing for i mean in the dream it felt like a long time but it was probably like five minutes of the dream but it was like kind of like a repeating loop like it was like okay here we are we're going to do this again and when, at first it was like I remember like being very like, like being lifted by the storm and thrown about and whatnot. And then by the end of the dream, you know, it was just passing through us. And there were points as well where we were laying on the ground. I forgot the yoga pose for, but it's like when you're in complete surrender, your chest is open, your heart is open, right? And it was like complete surrender as the storm was like passing through, it was so, so strange and i woke up and i was just like whoa and then after connecting with the divine this morning you know that's when i was like oh are we again in this energetic storm i hear the wind picking up like really intensely right now are we again in this storm and i feel like it's ongoing right because there's so much coming up there is a shift in vibration of the actual planet within itself the the it is um, vibrating higher and so we are having to calibrate and evolve with that higher like that that shift or ascension into a higher vibration and so naturally we're going to see the extremes in our environment and we're going to be shaken to the core like every fucking day it's something else right and so this is so relevant to Saturn retrograde in a sense where we are really directing our focus inwardly to develop, to refine our inner sense of authority, to define our inner strength, or really um, to strengthen that inner strength, right? And so this is really, really important right now. And it's interesting because last weekend was really intense. I experienced so many delays and detours just trying to like do the things I wanted to do and explore. You know, while I was on vacation, there was always some sort of delay which is typical for Saturn retrograde, right? Or Saturn within itself. And last week um, when I did a cosmic climate, I had pulled the dead end card and I pulled the Bardo, which the Bardo was that in between space, the transition. The dead end card represented the way, the message I was getting was like, there's no turning back. We have to move forward. Um, which is interesting for a dead end. I didn't really think too much about it. That's just what came through. It's like, you can't go back this way. You have to go a different way. You have to move forward, right? Um, and then I had a friend reach out to me and shared her interpretation, which she um, correlated that to when you come to a dead end, when you're driving, when you're traveling, you come to a road that's no outlet, it's a dead end, you have to turn around and go back the other way. And I was just like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Um, that's so matter of fact, right? But it was interesting because I really, in my own experience, I integrated both of those messages and it completely made sense. And it represented Mercury going direct and Saturn going retrograde. And so we're in this space where we're moving forward, right? We're not going back anymore with that Mercury stationing direct. And we're then with Saturn, we're moving, we're shifting our focus inward but you know technically like technically inward but um or maybe technically backwards like apparently backwards and then um metaphorically inwardly if you know what i'm saying um but there is this transition period right and with that transition when planets go from direct to retrograde or retrograde to direct there is that moment, they're almost essentially standing still, right? I'm going to say that quote, unquote, standing still. They're holding that space of shift and orientation, of shift and perspective. And so with them holding that space, they are stronger within their intention. And it's definitely more so in your face. And when a planet is in that retrograde motion, they are closer to the earth, which is why it is 
perceived or um, yeah, perceived as a more intense period, right? Because that planet's, you know, you can think of it, if they're closer to the planet, the vibration is a little bit, the frequency is a little bit louder. And so that's where that confrontation comes through. And so Saturn is such a great teacher when it comes to checking us on what the fuck we're doing here. It's like, okay, what are you doing here again, right? Let's, let's revisit this. Um, what's your purpose? What are you trying to heal? What are you trying to do, right? We're not moving any, for, for, any further. This is Saturn retrograde. We're going to go back and we're going to reevaluate and discern, is, are, are we still moving forward in the way that we desire, in the way that is in alignment with our own personal and spiritual development and our divine purpose here um, on this earth, within this earth experience? And so you may have experienced some delays um, or some detours over the weekend. And, you know, that's going to kind of be that Saturn energy. I feel that's going to be a little bit of that vibe and especially coming into this week. And so the highlight here I am finally <laughs> like 11 minutes and I'm getting into the actual cosmic climate for this week. But of course, this is ongoing. This week actually is not really that energetic until the weekend or that there's not a lot necessarily going on. Um, I do want to focus on the moon. Um, because I feel the moon, that's that's our our satellite, that's our closest celestial, the, the, that's the <laughs> celestial object that is closest to Earth, right? Um, and that sun and moon relationship, because when we're talking about tropical astrology, it's actually the sun-Earth connection. Um, so I don't, I'm not even going to get into tropical versus sidereal, but um, it's the sun earth connection, right? And the moon is, has a really powerful role in that. So it's really good to follow the moon's transits, you know, if there's nothing major, major going on. And so, you know, we're beginning this week with the moon in Virgo, the moon is waxing. It will hit its, as I'm, as I'm recording this, it had already hit its first quarter phase. So that first quarter is a point of, um, challenge, a point of transition, being at a threshold. And with the moon in Virgo and waxing, what I'm picking up on is with Virgo energy, Virgo is really good at just looking at a system, really with that keen eye, looking at a system to see what is not working here, what is toxic to this system, right? And you can go into detail with this, looking at your own birth chart and seeing what area of life is Virgo, this Virgo rule, right? And this is where the moon is transiting. And this is where there's going to be a focus, you know, at the beginning of this week, but it's really everything coming up in your life if you want to get like just like the complete whole perspective right and for the collective it's like where we are right now what is toxic to the system whether it's your body whether it's your your work your relationships just all across the board what is toxic to the system and virgo is looking at that and wanting to eliminate that and so i feel that is the vibe for this week the highlight transit for the week is venus aligning with Uranus, right? And so as the moon is, you know, doing its thing, it's growing in power or becoming more full. So it's waxing, there's this increase in energy, um, especially with that Gemini intention, there's an increase there. And so we're being guided to check in with our intention that we began with, that we initiated with that Gemini new moon, right? So that's going back to the communication, that's going back to information, and just really getting a good idea of what the details are, right? And so we're going to want to release what's not working there. And the challenge is accepting what's not working and surrendering and releasing, <laughs> right? Being that the moon is in opposition to um, Neptune. <laughs> I had to think about it and I have it like written right here. Being in opposition to the Pisces energy, being in square to the sun, right? So there's a little bit of conflict. And so moving forward, um, and I'm gonna wrap this up here since the little one is here. So she's definitely gonna want my focus. And um, here, sweetie. We're not going to play that, or we're not going to nurse right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we have the destroyer as the oracle card here. The destroyer is essentially, this message is basically stating that um, you can't have creation without destruction, right? 
So this is an element of releasing. This is saying that spirit is coming through to really help guide us in releasing what is no longer serving. Um, it's almost like with that, this is that Uranus energy where it's like, it's the sudden change and transformation. It is the liberation of the system. Yes, hey, sweetie. You want the wand? We're not going to nurse right now because I'm still recording. You wait till we're done. And so um, that is, you know, what's coming through this week as the Oracle. So expect the unexpected. We have Venus and, and Uranus aligning or conjoining in Taurus on Saturday. And what that essentially means is that there might be a sudden change in an agreement and a relationship um, with Venus and Taurus. It definitely is more grounded in your own values and your own self-worth. So if you're standing and getting and standing firm within that and getting clear, that might create some kind of shift in an agreement with another person. Um, and so this shift or this break in resistance, sweetie, you're not doing that. This break in resistance is what is going to liberate you know, yourself from an agreement, from a relationship or some aspect of it that will allow you to, you know, um, uh, achieve your goals and intentions. And I'm very distracted here. So I feel this is pretty good. I wanted to touch on the moon and Venus, but I think I'll make that a shorter um, video here. So if you are interested in learning how this energy, this cosmic climate works for you personally, definitely book a reading with me. You can do that via the link in the bio or in the caption of this video for a private recorded reading. Um, also, I offer tarot readings that are really in depth and I give you a ritual, a very simple ritual to, um, you know, utilize at your, at your will in your own time. Um, that's very relevant to your reading. And so definitely connect with me if you are looking to just dig it a little bit deeper into your own energy. Thank you as always for your support and I will talk to you all very soon.